Greetings, fellow Earthlings and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune215, and right now we're in the state of Michigan. We're currently in the city of Detroit. We're going to be doing a short driving tour of a neighborhood called Belmont here in Detroit, Michigan. It's 64 degrees outside right now. The sun is setting directly in front of us, as you can see the orange, pinkish hue in the sky. I'm going to make this right-hand turn on Hubble. We're coming off of Grand River. We're at the intersection of Grand River and Hubble. There's some potholes, so i got to be careful. I'm going to pull over. I have a vehicle behind me. I'm going to allow them to pass us. We have a series of vehicles. A one, a two, a three vehicles. Uh-oh, another one. A four vehicles. <laughs> vehicles everywhere, bro. It's a pile of trash on my right. We're in a residential neighborhood. Homes on my left, homes on my right hand side. There's an abandoned house on my right. I'm traveling about 19 miles an hour, but I do have a vehicle behind me tailing me quite closely. So I'm probably just gonna pull over and let them go again. But at this rate, I'm gonna have to just continue pulling over for every car in the whole wide world. We're at Intervale, Hubble and Intervale. Or Interval. Could be interval. I'm gonna allow this car in front of us to get by us. Go ahead, you're more than welcome to go, ma'am. You're taking quite long. Go ahead, you're more than welcome to go. Now you wanna go when I wanna go? Go ahead. You might as well just go. Yeah, you can go. I'm flashing my flashies so you can go. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, buddy. Come again. Abandoned house on my right. Another abandoned house on my right. So we got two-story homes. A-style rooftops, front lawns, vinyl siding. We're traveling 15 miles an hour. Front porches. Some of them have bricks. All right. Let's make a left on Fenkel Ave. I got a car behind me again. It seems like this is a another abandoned house on my left. It seems like this is a high-speed street, Hubble. So I want to get off of Hubble as soon as I can, ideally. So we're at Linden, Hubble, and Linden. Let's continue driving forward. The light turned green. We're passing Linden. Speed limit is 25 miles an hour. I'm doing 16. We got a huge pile of trash on my right-hand side. Just went through a pothole. More abandoned houses on my right. Look at this car's about to fly by us. They went straight up there one way. <laughs> Yo, they be in a rush to get nowhere. We're passing Eaton or Eton. Hubble and Eton. We got a bunch of kids on my right. We're passing Chow Font. Wow, this building on my left, it looks like it was a school or something. It's huge, but it might be abandoned. It's boarded up. It's abandoned, y'all. That thing's huge. High school. Thomas something something. High school. I can't even see. These cars behind me are tailing me too closely where I can... I don't know. I can't get a good look. Then it's starting to get dark. The sun's going down. We're at Hubble and Fenkel. We got a liquor joint on my right-hand side. So we're gonna make this left-hand turn on Fenkel, F-E-N-K-E-L-L. -E 
He made that turn sharp as ever. But then again, you see how crashed up the fender and the door was? That means that that person does that often. Yo, there's a three-wheeler over here on my left, a three-wheeler um, Yamaha <laughs> off-road ATV vehicle, yo. Those things are discontinued. They discontinued them because they're death traps. They're dangerous. <laughs> Marlo. They were known. We just passed Marlo. I'm sorry. They, they were known for um, a lot of uh, flipping accidents. People would turn, flip, and the bike would fall on them, and they would get injured badly. We're passing Lauder. You got the McKibben Masonic Temple on our left that was abandoned. A Masonic Temple. We're passing Robson. Got a beer, wine, and lottery spot on my right. Lake Ridge Ministries on our left. Passing Indigo Beauty World on our right. I'm going to make this left right here. Just to get off of this main street. Wow, there's a truck that almost rammed right into me, bro. Like, he was so close to me that he was trying to get around that pickup truck that was parked. I looked at my rear view, and he was, like, inches away from kissing our bumper. Just because they're impatient. They can't wait behind that car that was double parked. Like, bro, just wait a second. I know this car is small, but it's not invisible. Yo, there's a dope block right here that I want to go through because I see a bunch of graffiti, and then it's going to take us to that abandoned school. I'm intrigued by that abandoned high school. That thing is massive. It says no through traffic. This is Coyle and Ellsworth. It's probably a dead end, but it's cool. I just want to see it. There's a bunch of graffiti. This must have been their field on our right. Wow. Bunch of graffiti on my right hand side. Bunch of mattresses dumped on my left. That's the school right there. That thing is huge, right? Yeah, that's a big building that's abandoned. Oh, snap. This is really a no outlet. Straight up no outlet because there's no exit to the left and there's no exit to the right. But anyway, y'all get a chance to at least see this. Look at this. Wow. That is incredible, bro. Sheesh. Let me see if I can take a picture. I'm going to try to take a picture. I'm making my best attempt to snap a photo. Let me see. Put it on portrait mode. Portrait, uh, portrait, yeah, portrait's cool. Boom, I took a picture. Yeah, wow, this is a big piece of vacant property, guys. What do you think? Huge, right? Think about it. This whole block is vacant. The field isn't being used. At least not that I know of. It looks unmaintained. There's a bunch of graffiti and all that stuff. Oh, man. Let's get out of this little block. Not much going on here. All right, let's make this left hand turn. Let's make a right on the corner and then make another right. Because we're actually a block shy of the Belmont borderline. We're supposed to crack uh, uh, past Fenkel Ave. We're on Coil and Chalfont. So let's make this right and then we're going to make another right. And then past Fenkel. Wow, look at that across the street on my left. Abandoned, spray painted on, and it looks like it was possibly burnt. The roof is caving in. I want to make this right. So Belmont has an estimated population of 2,550 people. 
There's another abandoned house on my left. We got an apartment complex on my left-hand side. Midpoint Real Estate Services. Apartments available. Apply online at www.midpointdetroit.com. All right, this is Finkel. So we got to cross Finkel to actually say that we've been in the Belmont neighborhood, which comes up as one of the worst uh, neighborhoods here in Detroit. There was a list I pulled up. I didn't know what was first. I didn't know what was second. They just got bullet points. So I don't know if they're in order of being the most dangerous first or what, but I just picked a couple names with no bias because I'm don't. i not from here. So it's not like I know like which is more worse than the other. But I see a lot of abandoned houses, a lot of abandoned houses throughout Detroit and even businesses, surprisingly businesses, as you saw, school and even a church, abandoned church. We got everybody trying to turn towards us. Based on uh, judging how beat up these cars are <laughs> with physical wounds, I'm kind of worried. Like, I don't want nobody to low-key, like, run right into us and keep going. You, you know how it is. Like, they'll hit and run. <laughs> Yo. I mean, I got full coverage, but still. <laughs> I'm not trying to go through all that. All right, so we're in Belmont, guys. There was a Range Rover on our left reversing out. All right, we're on Keeler. <laughs> Keeler. Like, instead of the killer, like, Keeler. <laughs> You're the Keeler. Who's the Keeler? Somebody's the Keeler. K-E-E-L-E-R. Keeler. Yo, they got an IROC on my right on some, like, 22s, bro. That John is a convertible. An IROC, bro. That joint was clean. It was red with like some 22 inch rims. I mean, I probably wouldn't have put 22s on. Look at that. Out, bro. They're not even waiting. <laughs> yo, I should have rethought that move. I should have, like, you went, yo, when you drive in Detroit, you got to treat it like chess. Like, you got to, you know what I mean? You got to move the right, you want to move the pawn correctly. You want to move the, what is it, the bishop, the king, the queen? I don't know. I'm not that sharp in chess. Shout out to my homie 450 Lex. 450 Lex was the one who actually. Um, sat down with me one one day when I was in my, I would say, early 20s. We got another abandoned house on my right. Address is 15518 Sussex, Detroit, Michigan. That address on my right is abandoned. Not the one in front of us, but we passed it. So my sharp right, off screen. There's another abandoned one on my left. Look at this, boarded up. You can look up that property in case you want to see what that is worth. Those two gentlemen on my right that were trying to load up, it looked like a cabinet, a bureau, a shelf or something inside their vehicle. That bright yellow taxi, yellow car on my right, a Hyundai. Not for nothing, don't take this personal if you're watching and you drive a Hyundai or a Kia, but throughout a lot of the cities that we went through, and a lot of the states, Kia drivers and Hyundai drivers have a lot of road rage. Yeah, we got a whole group of people on my right-hand side. I'm going to bang this right. We're on Pilgrim. Pilgrim in Sussex. That was the intersection of Pilgrim and Sussex. All right, we're approaching Coil. C-O-Y-L-E. Spelled differently than C-O-I-L. Like a coil machine. Let's make this left. On coil, look at that house right there. It looked questionable. We got a broken window, and then the back garage was wide open. It looked abandoned, but it still had windows. It wasn't completely like some of the ones I saw that was like destroyed. So, what's the crime like in this neighborhood? The crime rate, based on areavibes.com, Belmont receives an F rating. Total crime is 499% above the national average. Property crime is 228% above the national average. Key findings show that violent crimes in Belmont are 1,865% higher than the national average. Y'all heard I ran out of breath? <laughs> I said higher. 
Yo, these numbers are impeccable. They're like, yo, bro, these numbers are ridiculous. 1,000. I, I thought Chicago was bad because, you know, I, when I read some of the stats in Chicago, they were like 800% higher than the national average, 600% higher than the national average, and so on, right? Bro, this is over 1,000%. Not only just over 1,000%, over 1,500%. Not just over 1,500%. Over 1,800% higher than the national average. There's a park on my left-hand side. I'm going to move forward. I just want to strategically make my right move. That's Coyle Park on my left. It's called Coyle Park. There's a fireworks yellow sign stapled to that tree in case you want to buy fireworks. <laughs> Yo. So it is said that Belmont is safer than 18% of the cities in Michigan. Damn. 18% with them with dumb type of rates? Violent crimes is 1,865% higher? Sheesh. I don't even want to see what, what, what the worst of the worst look like. Say no. <laughs> That's crazy. It's not funny, but sometimes you got to make light out of a dark situation. And that's bad. Like, look at for for example, it is said key findings show that in Belmont you have a 1 in 8 chance of becoming a victim of crime. So, theoretically speaking, if these uh stats were accurate, well, Coil and Florence. Let's make this left. If these stats were accurate, if eight people were outside, right? One out of those eight people Let's say eight randoms. Let's not say eight residents because residents probably got a better chance of walking around here. If eight randoms were walking around, one out of those eight randoms might have a problem in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? You might become a victim of crime based on those stats. All right, we're at Sussex. Let's pass Sussex. Some of these blocks look nice. I'm not going to make it seem like they all messed up. Surprisingly... This area doesn't have as many abandoned houses as the previous area that I visited. The previous area that I visited, it was abandoned houses back to back to back. Or every other couple houses was abandoned. It's like every block had a few abandoned houses guaranteed. This block, for example, let's make this left on Whitecomb. Let's shine some light on one of these uh, nicer blocks. This is Florence and Whitecomb, or Whitcomb. Yeah, these houses are all lived in. They're all bricks. They got the nice little lantern lights on. It's a nice wide street. Could fit maybe three, four cars wide. They got front lawns. They got sidewalks, and the sidewalk has another lawn next to it. Wow, one of these houses over here on my left had the gates that cover the front of their, their window. The only other place I've seen those gates that cover the front of the window are storefronts and or when we went to Gary, Indiana, we went to Michael Jackson's block, his, his, his childhood home, where his childhood home is at, on Jackson Family Boulevard in Jackson, I believe 2300 Jackson in Gary, Indiana. The F Jackson family still owns those homes, and they put those gates in front of their properties, I guess, so nobody breaks in. But I just saw the house right here on my left-hand side with them. So I don't know if it's because they left the home or because they still live there, and they just said, listen, it's that dangerous that we got to put these roll-down gates in front of our house. If that's the case, that kind of sucks. Now, if it's for protection, like they say they went on a vacation, bright orange car, I used to have one. Um, if it's because they went on vacation, then all right, I understand. You on vacation, or let's say, you know, this is your second or third home and you just want to protect your, your valuables in the home, then that's fine. Motorcycle dude on our left. So as you can see, it's starting to get really dark and that was my concern about doing tours at night. The picture quality doesn't look too good, at least with this camera. All right, so what's the employment stats look like? This neighborhood receives a D minus for employment. Their income per capita is below 42% uh, below the national average. Unemployment is 3% below the national average. That's some of the best. Oh, there's a abandoned house on my left. Wow, I missed it. Um, that's some of the, the best stats that I've seen yet when it comes to unemployment here. 3% below is not that bad. I saw 100% below. I saw 120%. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Above the national average. But here is 3% below the national average, which isn't that bad. That means many people are, are employed here. Key findings show that the median household income in Belmont is 24% lower than the national average. Again, that's a little bit better. 
male median earnings are 41 percent higher that seems to be the same across the board in in many uh states the unemployment rate is three percent lower than the national average the poverty level in belmont is 100 percent lower than the national average this neighborhood receives a 56 livability score which is considered a poor livability score it's ranked number 80 in neighborhoods in detroit ranked 130 in neighborhoods in michigan as a state and it ranks better than 11 percent of the neighborhoods uh, you know the areas we didn't look at the whole entire belmont area but i gave y'all a little seed i think i probably spent a little longer than i should have here because it's getting dark and my goal was try to you know capture as many as i could before it get dark but as you can see it's getting dark y'all it's getting real dark i'm gonna try to check out another area before it gets completely dark out here <laughs>